This is the second section of chapter five, and this section is on confidence intervals. So what is a confidence interval? Well, say uh, we have estimated uh, a population parameter from a sample of size n. So we've taken a sample and we've est estimated a population parameter like the mean or the variance of standard deviation. Then a confidence interval, which we shorten to CI, is an interval in which we can be confident to a specified probability that might be 90%, 95%, and so on, um, that the population parameter lies. Now, the population parameter we're going to be looking at is the mean. So we won't be looking at confidence intervals for the variance or anything like that, just confidence intervals for the mean. Now, let's say, for example, that I calculated a sample mean as 3.5 then I might say that I can be confident that the population mean is between three and four. We'll look at the mass behind this in a moment. And if I was confident, let's say I was 95% confident that the population mean was be between three and four, that I would say that I've got a confidence interval of, I think I said 95% for the population mean to be in the interval three, to four. Now you could write it uh, in this way using uh, inequalities as well. So we'll talk about this as being the confidence interval. And then we we'll also talk about the interval width here. And in this case, it would be one. And these values here, the three and the four, the two end values refer to as the confidence limits. Now, since uh, sample means are normally distributed uh, with a mean of the population mean and a variance of the variance squared over n the sample size, we're going to use the standardized normal distribution to help us find a calculation that will enable to us to work out these confidence intervals. So on this standardized normal distribution, this point here, the center is going to be our sample mean. And these two points are going to represent our limits, the lower limit and our upper limit for our confidence intervals. And let's say, for example, I want to find an interval in which I can be 95% confident that the population mean is going to be in that interval. Now, that doesn't mean that the population interval is going to be in that limit. Our sample mean could be way off from what the population mean is. In our sample, we may not have uh, the outliers that the population has, but we could be 95% sure that the population mean is going to be within these limits. And since this is a standardized normal distribution with an area of 95%, that means two and a half percent in the tails here. That would give me Z values of 1.96 and minus 1.96. So with that information and sort of undoing the standardization, if I take my sample mean and I add or subtract 1.96 times by the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size, that will give me the upper and lower limits for a 95% confidence interval. In a similar way, for a 90% confident interval, so let's say this area is 90%, then these values are going to be 1.6449 and minus 1.6449. This is the calculation we do to find the upper and lower limits for a 90% confidence interval and for a 99% confidence interval the value changes to 2.5758. Now you can get these values from the percentage points table, or you can get them from your calculator. Now, if I take the bits that I've highlighted in orange here and times them by two, then that will give me the width of a confidence interval. Example seven, show that a 95% confidence interval for the population mean mu based on a sample of size n is given by x bar minus 1.96 times by sigma, sigma over the square root of n, x bar plus 1.96 times 
sigma over root n. Well, we'll start with the fact that we know that the sample mean is approximately normally distributed with the population mean and with the population variance over n. And we also know that the standardized normal distribution uh, is this, a mean of zero, a variance of one squared. And we know that if we want to standardize, z equals x minus the mean over the standard deviation. So we just plug this information. We're going to standardize this sample mean distribution. So x becomes x bar. The mean, well, that's just going to be the mean here. And dividing by the standard deviation, well, that's going to be the square root of this, which is going to be sigma over root n. Now, since I'm uh, asked to show a confidence interval of 95% using the percentage points table on my calculator, I'll get these limits here as 1.96 and negative 1.96. So from a diagram, we know that the probability that uh, Z is between negative 1.96 and positive 1.96 is 95%. The next step is just to replace Z with the uh, right hand side here when we standardize it. So now we're just going to concentrate on this bit in the bracket and rearrange it. So we're going to times both sides by the standard deviation over root n. So that's this step down here. Next, we're going to subtract um, the sample mean from both sides of this inequality. And then we're going to multiply both sides by negative one, which means the signs are going to flip. So we'll do that now. So those two steps are done. So the last thing that is just to write this down in interval notation. And our final answer is down the bottom here as required. So that will be our 95% confidence interval. Example eight, the breaking strains of reels of string produced at a certain factory have a standard deviation of 1.5 kg. A sample of 100 reels from a certain batch were tested and their mean breaking strain was 500 and oh sorry 5.3 kg so I'll just highlight these important things here standard deviation sample and the mean breaking strain from this sample was 5.30 kg part a find a 95 percent confidence interval for the mean breaking strain of string in this batch Right, so the standard deviation is 1.5. My value of n is 100. That was my sample size. And my sample mean from that 100 was 5.30. Now to find my confidence interval of 95%, I need to do my sample mean plus or minus 1.96 times the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. So that should be a fairly easy calculation. 5.30 plus or minus 1.96 times by 1.5 over root 100 right so that is going to give me 5.30 plus or minus uh, 147 over 500 which is 0 0.294 so that gives me a lower limit of 5.006 and an upper limit of 5. 594. So I can just stick that in square brackets and that's going to be my confidence interval. Now, uh, again, you could write this uh, as an inequality if you want, stick mean in the middle and then two inequality signs. Okay, part B. The manufacturer becomes concerned if the lower 95% confident limit falls below 5 kg. 
A sample of 80 reels from another batch gave a mean breaking strain of 5.31 kg. Will the manufacturer be concerned? So the standard deviation remains the same at 1.5. My sample now is 80. And the mean from that sample was 5.31. Kg and um, the manufacturer will be concerned if the lower confidence limit falls below 5 kg. So, in this question, I only need to work out what the lower limit of the confidence interval is and compare it to uh, 5 kg. So, my calculation is going to be my sample mean just minus 1.96 times the variance over the square root of the sample size. So in this case, it's going to be 5.31 minus, just minus, because it's just a lower limit, 1.96 times 1.5 over the square root of 80. And that gives me a value of 4.9812. So on, it carries like that. That is 4.98 to three significant figures. Now, it doesn't really matter how many significant figures I do it to because I'm comparing it to five. So this number here is less than five kg. Therefore, the manufacturer should be concerned. Manufacturer should be concerned. Example nine, a random sample of size 25 is taken from a normal population with a standard deviation 2.5. The mean of the sample is 17.8. Part A, what we need to do is to find a 99% confidence interval for the population mean mu. So a 95% confidence interval is going to be the sample mean plus or minus, um, oh, for 99%, I was about to write 1.96, that is for 95%, that is 2.5758 times by the standard deviation over root n, the square root of the sample size. So, uh, in this question, my sample mean is 17.8, uh, n is 25, and my standard deviation is 2.5. So we just plug those numbers in, 17.8 plus or minus 2.5758 times by 2.5 over the square root of 25, which is going to be 5. So that's going to give me 17.8 plus or minus 1.2879. So from there, I can go straight to my confidence interval. So my lower limit will be 16.5121. It's only four decimal places. So I'm going to write the whole lot down. If you are going to round it, uh, make sure that you write an answer to at least three significant figures. And then my upper limit is 19.0879. Okay, let's have a look at part B. What sample size is required to obtain a 99% confidence interval? So in this question, we're trying to find N um, of width most 1.5. Now to find the uh, width of a confidence interval. Remember, we take this part of the calculation and we times it by two. Now, these numbers will be different at the front here, depending on the um, the probability level. But for 99%, which is what is asked, I times that by two. So here's my calculation: two point or two times by two point five seven five eight times by the standard deviation at two point five over the square root of n, n is what I need to find. And I want this width to be at most 1.5.
So this inequality it needs to be less than or equal to 1.5. So the rest of the question, nice and straightforward, is just about solving that inequality to find n. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is multiply these three numbers together. 2 times by 2.5758 times by 2.5, then divide by 1.5. And that gives me 8.586, then times both sides by root n. So I've got this. I'll square both sides. So that'll give me 73.719 less than or equal to root n. We want to flip that around. It's just a bit easier. And we'll square it as well. So n needs to be greater than or equal to that 73.719 so on squared. Actually, I've already squared it, haven't I? So I don't need to square root there so actually that just should have been n so 73.719 n's got to be a whole number it's a sample sign so it's got to be greater than or equal to that so n the least it can be is 74 so we'd need a sample size of at least 74 to reduce the confidence uh, interval width to 1.5. And actually, you should be able to see that as we increase n, as we increase our sample size, we can decrease the width of this confidence interval. And that sort of makes sense. If you have a bigger sample, you're going to catch more and more of those outliers, those bigger and smaller values, get a bigger, uh, a better idea of what's going on in the population. So we, we can reduce the width of our confidence interval. OK, enough of me wittering on. Part C, what confidence interval would be associated with the interval based on the above sample of 25, but of width 1.5, i.e. 17.05 and 18.55? OK, so this part is actually quite easy to do because it can all be done on our calculator. So this normal distribution basically represents what's going on. There's our lower value. There's the upper uh, value here. There's a width of 1.5 uh, between those two values. That's the difference between those two. And we're basically trying to work out what the error is because that is the confidence level. Now, the standard deviation of this is going to be the standard deviation we're given 2.5 over the square root of the sample size which is uh, going to be 5 and the mean of this is 17.8 because that was the mean of the sample so just by using normal cd and a lower limit of 17.05 upper limit of 18.55 a standard deviation we'll just type this in 2.5 divided by 5 and the calculator will work it out and a mean of 17.8 that gives us an area of 0.86638 and so on so our confidence interval we just need to give that as a percentage and i'll give that as 86.6 percent .6 and that is to three significant figures so we'll just highlight that answer there. So you should now be able to do exercise 5B on pages 124 to 126.